Yeah, let me also take the opportunity and congratulate uh, the MIEC Society to 10 years. Uh, it's an amazing development, amazing history. And thank you for giving us the opportunity, as always, uh, to present during this meeting. I thought I take this occasion also as an idea for my presentation and look for advancements in minimally invasive perfusion equipment and techniques during the past decade uh, to see how MIEC potentially is changing our way of working and also changing the, uh, the equipment. As we all know, uh, MIEC is about improving biocompatibility and reducing adverse effects of uh, cardiopulmonary bypass. And we also have seen uh, the uh, recommendation in the guidelines uh, several times before, I believe. There are three. So mainly uh, MIEG is um, recommended uh, in terms of uh, reduced blood loss and the need for transfusion over conventional CPB uh, and also uh, to improve the biocompatibility. Do we see that MIEG is replacing uh, conventional CPP on a wide scale? Probably we are not there yet. Uh, there are, certainly, uh, there is increased interest. But I don't think, and also uh, some presentations before mentioned, that we are lacking a little bit behind in the adoption rate. Uh, the third recommendation actually uh, caught my interest, uh, and this is to use a combination of MIEC features uh, to improve conventional CPB. And I believe to that aspect, we see activities on many levels. And so I screened literature uh, over the past 10 years. Uh, it's certainly not a complete analysis. Uh, it's also subjective, but I hope uh, it gives a good rep representation what uh, happened uh, during the past 10 years. So the first point I would like to mention is an obvious one, and I believe many, many centers uh, revised their uh, circuit diagrams over the past years, looking to reduce tubing length, so also looking to change tubing diameter. Uh, here, as an example, I just uh, put one paper where the standard half-inch venous line was replaced by a smaller 3 8 inch uh, venous line uh, for patients up to 80 kilograms, just using uh, gravity drainage. And alone, this change uh, resulted in a significant reduction in red blood transfusion. So quite remarkable, and, and I'm sure many centers uh, did uh, these activities. Some clinics were even going further and combined different types and sizes of oxygenators with different tubing size. Um, also during the past decade, I believe uh, small adult oxygenators have become more popular. Uh, so, on top of the, the full-size adult oxygenator, uh, there were smaller products developed um, that um, are ideal to perfuse uh, smaller patients. And um, there is one example again here from the Mayo Clinic using this approach. And they uh, created the decision tree where based on the calculated blood flow of the patient, different oxygenator sizes and also different sized uh, tubing. Uh, was used with big success. So especially for smaller adult patients, uh, this concept resulted in a reduction of transfusion needs and is certainly beneficial. Uh, by the way, this FX15, small adult oxygenator, this is also the oxygenator uh, we had in the RockSafe system. So this is also um, a very unique product uh, that can be used in MIEC uh, closed circuits. One additional point uh, that is, I, I consider part of the MIAC DNA uh, is the use of autologous priming techniques, also to reduce the volume of crystalloid uh, priming solution. 
Also, this meanwhile is listed in uh, the guidelines with the highest uh, class of recommendation, class one, level A. I remember 10 years ago, I believe this was still discussed controversially, uh, but meanwhile, uh, there is enough uh, clinical evidence to, to have this high recommendation. Again, just as an example, one paper where um, uh, a special uh, technique is used, the hem hematic uh, antigrade repriming, uh, and it uh, was shown in this study that this reduces transfusion requirements. Also, inflammatory response in terms of uh, extended mechanical ventilation. It saved cost and is a safe uh, technology. Now, moving to a, a different topic, this goes more in the direction of reducing inflammatory rep response, and this is about a removal of gaseous microemboli or also particles. And uh, I remember uh, Mike mentioned it already uh, yesterday in his uh, great presentation. This is the use of integrated arterial filter. This is beneficial in, in many ways. It uh, not only helps to reduce priming volume because now the filter doesn't require own housing anymore, has um, uh, no own priming volume or is adding very, very little priming volume uh, to the oxygenator priming volume. It also reduces foreign surface area because, again, there is no arterial filter housing anymore and it even improved uh, GME removal. So this, in my eyes, was uh, one of the most important advancements in oxygenated technology in the past decade. Then something that looks small. Uh, <laughs> I still want to, to mention it because I was so impressed uh, what difference it makes in the end. Mm -hmm. It's the introduction of curved venous inlets on oxygenated reservoirs. And I believe that the credit here goes to Medtronic, yes, all right? <laughs> uh, I believe uh, Medtronic was first introducing this uh, with the fusion. When I heard about it, I said, ah, come on, this is really a small thing. Yeah. Uh, what, what can it change? And uh, when, when we also adopted this with the, the Carpiox FX Advance Oxygenator, I was so surprised how much this improves the air elimination uh, in the reservoir. It's simply that the curved inlet uh, allows a laminar flow and air bubbles stay intact. They are not dispersed because of turbulence. This is happening with the angle design, creates turbulence. Uh, large bubbles are dispersed and many small bubbles that are very difficult to remove. With the curved inlets, you see the on, on the diagram on the right side, uh, it really makes a difference. We at Haruma believe that when we want to do uh, less invasive perfusion and a more uh, physiological perfusion, it requires uh, real-time monitoring device. Uh, here we, we are strong with the CDI monitoring platform. It's very well established, exists since more than 30 years and also clinically well proven. There is this landmark paper from uh, Trowbridge and colleagues showing that keeping the blood gas parameters and other blood parameters within physiological range uh, reduces complication rates, reduces ICU stay and hospital stay, and so improving uh, patient outcome. Uh, the CDI monitors 12 essential blood parameters, some of which are unique, like the potassium, the pH, and uh, base excess. Since the launch of the CDI 550, we have also implemented goal-directed uh, therapy, which also is, uh, is part of the MIAC approach. So we included DO2, VO2 uh, parameters. And uh, again, uh, goal-directed uh, therapy is uh, recommended with class uh, one level A in the European guidelines. I'm today pleased to inform you that we are uh, about to launch the next generation CDI now. Uh, it's called CDI One View. And just two weeks ago, we obtained uh, FDA approval for this new device. Uh, you see in red, uh, unfortunately, we are still missing the CE mark. And due to MDR regulation, uh, this has become a lengthy process. So it will still take a while, we assume a year approximately until we will have this uh, in Europe. What is new? Uh, obviously, we kept the goal-directed uh, therapy 
included uh, one more calculated parameter, the uh, O2 extraction ratio. Uh, the device is future proof. It allows implementation of additional parameters once they become available. Uh, it has simply um, a more modern look. It has a touchscreen uh, display, is a modular setup. The processing core is separate uh, from the uh, display and can be mounted behind the hard lung machine where it is not in the way. Uh, all, the, all of you using the CDI, you will know that uh, service is not so easy for the CDI if a probe breaks. Uh, always the monitor had to go to a service depot for repair. And this is why we now uh, designed it in a way that it is plug and play. So if now a probe breaks, you can simply unplug it yourself and uh, plug in a new probe and you can go on. There's no need anymore to send in the devices for uh, service. So this will greatly uh, improve also the, the user experience. And finally, transport will get uh, faster. Uh, because we have slightly reduced the size of the calibrator and the gas bottles, and gas bottles can now be shipped by air, which was not the case before. Nice. Only sea and, and road transport, which is obviously slow, was possible. Okay. One last uh, device that I would like uh, to show, and I, I did that before, uh, is endoscopic vessel harvesting. And this even so, you know, it has nothing to do directly with the extracorporeal circulation. I still think this can be an integral part of a bypass operation, a minimally invasive operation. And looking at the uh, images, I believe uh, it's very clear what I mean with minimal, uh, minimally invasive. Uh, alone, the cosmetic result is far better compared to open vein harvesting or even the bridging technology. Um, and there are numerous benefits uh, for the patient and also for the uh, clinicians, like reduced wound healing, uh, less pain and, and shorter hospital stay, uh, simply uh, lower incidence of complications. It's also uh, for the clinician, uh, clinician offering uh, excellent vein quality or vessel quality. And it is also cost uh, effective. When I say cost effective, you may question that because we hear many times this as an argument to not uh, do it. Even so, uh, endoscopic vessel harvesting is absolutely state of the art in North America. Like 90% plus of all procedures are done endoscopically, endoscopically while here in, in Europe it's more the, the opposite. It's somewhere between maybe 15 and 20% endoscopically. There are um, studies showing that uh, the technology is also uh, cost efficient and superior to open vessel harvesting. So it is certainly worth trying and we see uh, this also is uh, improving and we see increasing case uh, uh, loads from year uh, to year. So this concludes my short presentation. I think there are many examples <coughs> where we can clearly say the MIAC idea, the MIAC concept influenced uh, device development, but also the uh, techniques uh, that are used in uh, daily practice. And I'm really looking forward to see further progress in the, in the next coming decade. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Andreas. Now the next speaker will be from Livanova. It's Mr. Deriu. I'm right. Deriu. Yeah, I think actually. Yeah, oh, that sorry, yeah. 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 I say you do you do mine, I'll do the work you leave it on. Sorry, it's my fault. Uh, sorry. Sorry, Michael. That's all right, man. No.